Rishika, I have a, a deep question, which I hope you can answer with your wisdom. I, I've seen your videos many times, and I was just curious, you talk about the truth impulse and listening to your soul becoming an instrument of the divine. The question I have is how is your teaching similar to or different from uh, say the teachings of ancient Greek philosophers like Socrates or Western poets like Rilke or intuitive figures like Einstein? There's a common thread that runs through these thinkers, philosophers, scientists, artists, in that they are operating from a more transformative platform on that spectrum of consciousness because they go beyond that thinking state but express what they have experienced in words. Take Nietzsche, a very good example of someone who went way, way beyond the conceptual. In fact, he was, he was called mad at one point, but then expressed himself so precisely in the, in the conceptual itself. These thinkers and philosophers and poets and writers are impulsed by that truth. I would not be able to comment on Rilke, on Socrates, but what I sense, what your question is, is are they describing the same thing? If they are saying to you that there is an impulse within the system which is felt materially, then they are saying the same thing I am. If they are referring to an impulse which is cosmic in nature only and exclusively, then they are not talking about the same thing. So what I'm speaking about is a materially experienced impulse. And when I say material, what I mean is deep down within the very materiality of the system, there emerges from those depths the truth. And it is experienced as an impulse in the system. There are also people, Edward, who have questioned me about this impulse, asking if it could be some sort of protein that has emanated from the genes themselves. And, is then causing this feeling of an impulse. It could very well be that, it could be anything. The observation is, and it's clearly that, that when you go with that impulse, it leads the system into a state of joy, which means there is a reduction in the pain experienced by the system in the physical, in the emotional, in the conceptual and in the transformative. So if they are describing this, this one can almost call it an entity, then I would say, yes, it's the same thing. Else, it could also be a clearer description that I'm bringing of something perhaps fuzzier in the past. You know, when you look at a landscape and you take a picture of it with a, with a daguerreotype or with a Leica, there is a difference in the result, but the landscape is the same. The kind of thought that they've come up with and how they expressed it is a factor of their socialization, the framework in which they expressed it. What facet of that truth are they expressing? Are they impulsed by something? What is their description of that something that impulsed them? If it is similar to what I'm saying, then it's the same thing. If it's not, then it's not the same thing. Those are the depths from which I could answer your question, Edward. I, I appreciate that, Maharishi. I, I just know a number of highly spiritual artists and poets and other people where they have dreams that inspire them, they actually feel compelled to follow their, follow their creative drives. They are operating at a level of strong feelings and strong drive where it's very real to them that there's something guiding them. There could be very, very different sources of that guidance. That guidance could come from the ego. It could be a strong ego guiding them to do something which could result in great destruction. So we can't know that unless they have precisely described the source of the inspiration. Most of the time what happens, Edward, is that 
the consciousness expands into the transformative, into the transrational. And it is from the transrational, the transformative, the occult, the area where thoughts cease and creativity emerges, that they receive what they are receiving. But the transformative can also express that which is arising from ego. So that is the discourse. If what such a person does leads to more joy in themselves and in others, then we can speak about, you know, in hindsight, we can speak about the Truth having been operative there. And if there has been destruction that has been caused, if there has been a destruction to the body of that person or to their, to their being, then it would be a questionable source. So if someone in their older years was completely mad and crazy and, and not any more coherent, then it would be a questionable thing as to where they got that inspiration from or what was it that was guiding them? Was it some sort of a source of knowledge like a disembodied being, for example, that was guiding them to destroy? Or was it the Truth impulse, independent of the ego's desires, that was guiding them to act in a way that raises not just the joyousness in their system, but that of those around them? So it's a causative thing. It depends on, on the result. If the result is a positive one seen from a general perspective, then it would be more likely to be the Truth Impulse. I know that this sounds very black and white and reductionist and simplistic, but sometimes in these quests one has to also be that way, else it just becomes a huge bunch of words cobbled together, attempting to make sense in this, in this universe where the rational doesn't have much to offer, you know? Yes.